The Bible said in the book of Revelation 10, from verse 6, he said, And swore by him who lived forever, is an angel that is speaking, who created heaven and the things that are in the earth, and the things that are in it, and the sea, and the things that are in it, that there should be no more delay. Am I talking to somebody? An angel of God is prophesying to you today that every delay in your life is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say no more delay in my life. No more delay in my family. No more delay in my career. In Jesus' name. One battle we must always fight is the spirit of delay. In the book of Matthew 25, from verse 5 and 6, the Bible spoke about the ten virgins. Why they fell was because the bridegroom delayed. So most of the time when there's a delay, people give up. When there's delay, people sleep. They slept because the bridegroom delayed. So today I'm praying for you. The Lord is removing delay from your life. He's removing delay from your family. Maybe there are some people here that there's no delay in your life, but I'm talking to the ones that there's delay. The Lord said he's removing delay from your life. In the name of Jesus, may that delay pack their load and go. In the name of Jesus, say every delay in my life, I command you, in the name of Jesus, pack your load and go. In the name of Jesus. In Ezekiel 12, from verse 21, he said, This is what the sovereign law say. I am going to put an end to this proverb, and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, The days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. Because their first scripture said, They were saying, All prophecies are being delayed. Son of man, what is the proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Meaning the visions are not fulfilled. They are delayed. So the Lord is saying there will be no more prolong in every vision that has been spoken concerning your life. Every good thing God has said concerning your life and your family. I decree and I declare there shall be no more delay. In the name of Jesus, say, Oh Lord, Today, bury delay in my life. Every area of my life where there is delay, be buried. I bury that spirit of delay. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. more delay in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. There are four fears of man that God always address when he wants to change your life. Number one is fear. So, this body we are wearing is used to fear the fallen man, the natural man gives in easily to fear. So everyone is scared. That is why every time an angel appeared in the Bible, the first thing they say is fear not. So the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy 1 from verse 7, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. That was where fear was dealt with. God dealt with fear by saying, I didn't give you that spirit. Although it's in you, I didn't give it to you. And the opposite of fear, God said, is faith. Whenever God wants to strike fear out of your life, he gives you faith. For you to fulfill destiny, God must strike fear from your life and inject faith in you. Yes, faith is the antidote of fear. The number two is lie 
man is affiliated to lie. Numbers 23 from verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. As he said, I will not do it, or as he spoken, I will not make it good. So man accepts lie easily. Lie is our nature, the fallen man. So that's why Jesus came to tell us that I am the way, the truth, and the lie. So the antidote of lie is truth. So all these things I'm listening to you, the devil knows they are part of us. They are part of the fallen man. So whenever he wants to strike our, our destiny or the vision God is giving to us, he comes with fear and he lies to you. So Jesus said, he's the father of lies. And if man is used to lie, then the devil will always lie to us. I'm praying for you. Every lie of the devil that have been holding you down today, the truth shall make you free. If truth make you free, lie hold you to bondage. Lie put you in prison. There are prisons that is not court case that will set you free. It's not any key that sets you free. It's truth. You have to know the truth to be free from such prison. The prison of lie answers only to the key of truth. So the Lord wants us to have the truth of every area of our life. Where the devil have lied to us. So today you are coming out of that lie. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all these things I'm counting for you. Your five senses promote them. You know how you advertise, how to advertise a product. Lie is advertised by your five senses, your sight, what you can see. Lie advertises it more. It advertises lie a lot. Fear, your five senses advertise fear a lot. Yes, they promote these things. And you can't do away with this body. You know, Jesus said in the book of John 16, 33, he said, in me you will find peace, but in this world you will find tribulation. When he's talking about the world, he's talking about our five senses. When you look at your account today now, it can be lying to you that your account balance is zero, zero, zero. That's a lie. Are you hearing me? That is not the will of God for you. It's a lie. You are not hearing me. When you check your health, your health is not fine. It's a lie. Truth said, by stripes you are healed. Are you hearing me? Yes. Truth said, I am the Lord that giveth the power to make wealth. That's what truth said. But these two are contrary to each other and they are fighting each other in your life. The truth shall make you free. Today you are coming out of all lies of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Then man also is built with impossibility. Impossibility means the hard facts of life. There are things you see in life and you say, I don't think I can come out of this. That is because you are a man. You have a body. Your five senses. Yes. He said, with men, it is impossible. So there are things that are impossible for your five senses. You are built like that. It's not... <laughs> When you see some things and say, this is impossible. I don't think I can ever be great in life. I don't think my life can ever change. I don't think I'm qualified for prosperity. I don't think I'm healed. I don't think I can do it. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. The Bible said in Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There are things that are hard for man, not God. Yes. So the reason why we are running to God every day, not only on Sundays, because if you only follow God on Sundays, everything you learn will diffuse from your mind. You have to keep on 
hearing God, maintaining your relationship, your communion with God. Yes, this your flesh will tell you lies. Many people have committed suicide because of lies that the devil was telling them. Not somebody has told them. You need to know the truth for yourself. And you need to find the God that does the impossible. You have to know him. That yes, I know if the devil show you things that are impossible in your life, you say, yes, I know I can't do it. But with God. When you look at everything going on in your life, now every challenge going on in your life, the depth you are owing, it looks as if you are behind in career. Yes, it is impossible with you, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Beauty and the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Nothing is too hard for your God. So your time invested in God is not a waste. Your time is not a waste. Am I communicating? Yes, Say, I'm investing my time, I'm investing my time. With, the with the God that nothing is impossible with him. Yes. For you to really experience that, you have to invest time to know this, what I'm talking about. Because like I said, your flesh is speaking. Your five senses is speaking. They are telling you lies. They are telling you fears. They are telling you impossibilities. So that's why one of the greatest scripture in the Bible is the book of Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. Don't just quote that scripture. Look at your circumstances and quote it. Look at your circumstances and say it. It's not a recitation. It was not to motivate you. It's to tell you that nothing is impossible with you when Christ is in you. I can do all things. Can you say it? I can do all things. Say it again. I can do all things. Put the picture of whatsoever you are going through today, whatsoever battle you are going through in your life, whatsoever the devil is showing you that you can do. In your mind eyes, look at those things. Say, I can do all things. Remember, after you leave here tomorrow, the devil will come after you. So you better see what I'm saying now. And nobody will be there to help you. When you go home, get to your bed, when you, are, you are alone now. You need to know all these things. When those voices are trying to suffocate you, when those voices are trying to depress you, you have to stand up yourself and say, I can do all things. Say, I can do all things. Through Christ, that strengthens me. I can be rich. I can be, I can be healed. I can, I can raise the dead. I can be prosperous. I can be a success. True Christ who strengthens me. Are you, are you hearing that? Everything we answer to you if you can talk to yourself. Are you hearing me? Yes, Everything responds to you the way you talk to yourself. Not things. You don't need to change things. You don't need to change people. You don't need to change country. Change you. Talk to you. Everything will respond to you with the conversation you have with yourself. Your greatest gift is you. Do you know the most difficult thing is not for you to convince somebody, it's for you to convince yourself. <laughs> are, you, are you hearing me? Yes, yeah, that's the greatest mystery in life. Because if you are convinced, everyone will be convinced. So one of the greatest tasks is to convince yourself. So Jesus said, if I be lifted up, John 12, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. If I be lifted up. So you have to lift yourself up. Are you hearing me? Everything is trying to bring you down. Everything is trying to bury you. But if you are lifted up, all things will take shape in your life. Are you hearing me? Not somebody, there are points in your life where nobody will lift you up. 
you have to lift yourself up. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Somebody you are standing today, John 12, 32, if I am lifted from the earth, the earth means the pits. The earth means your senses, your five senses. If you can talk yourself out of your five senses, all men will respond to you. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, it is what you told yourself that make people treat you the way they, treat, they, they are treating you. What you are telling yourself is what will make life treat you the way it's treating you. When, once you begin to tell yourself somethingness, begin to speak differently to yourself, everybody will begin to react differently to you. If I be lifted up. Are you hearing me? That was what the Lord was trying to teach the prophet Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 37. When he got to the valley of dry bone. He was expecting God to speak. God did not speak. God says prophesy to them. Prophesy to the bones. Every dry bone in your life is waiting for your prophecy. Are you hearing me? These bones were dry. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones. First, the Lord asked him, can these bones live again? They were very dry. Believe me, everyone will find themselves in that dry pit. Where things look dry around you. God will take you to where you will see the dry bone with your five senses. But he does not want you to call that bone dry. He wants you to speak life to the dry bones. Are you hearing me? These words are not mere motivations. They are truth. They are literal truths that you will see in life. Every one of us now is being faced with this valley of dry bones. Everyone. And some of them are saying, these bones are too dry. <laughs> God is saying, son of man, can this bone live again? Then he said, oh Lord, you know. Then God said, prophesy to it. Prophesy to the bones. Oh, you bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Everything in your life that the enemy called dry, it can live again. Yeah. And I'm prophesying to you, they will live now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I told you that on Friday I was telling you, I think the most depressed people are people that take care of humanity. Humanitarians like police, therapists, teachers, pastors. They are the most depressed people. They are the most confronted people. And let's put parents also. Children don't know. You know your children can come to you and say, Daddy, breakfast. Daddy, lunch. Daddy, my school fees. Daddy, mommy, this. Daddy, they are, they are demanding because you are central bank. You are the bank of South Africa that they are seeing. And in their mind, nothing is impossible for you. Are you hearing me? So even when you don't have, you don't tell a little child, hey, go to school, I don't have money, go and sit down. You don't say it. You say, don't worry, I'll see your teacher. Is it true? Yeah. <laughs> Their faith is on you. And you are the depressed. You are the one carrying the load. So because what I'm telling you this is, you will face these dry bones. There are situations of life. There are challenges of life. And all of them are eagerly waiting for what you will say. Are you going to say, you dry bone, receive life? Or you will say, everything around me is dry. What are you going to say? Huh? You can say it now in church. I, I hope you say it more. <laughs> <laughs> where you are living your life. You see, God has to teach me 
because when I started ministry 2017, 18, I was just this one that go come out to teach people. When I finished teaching people, I was depressed myself. That's when I knew men of God are depressed. If anyone would like to tell you, they will tell you. Some people see pastors and they are eager. Who I have a call. I have a call. Hey, <laughs> oh, check your call. <laughs> check, check, check it. Just as it's not easy to be a parent, let me just use you being a parent. That one at least small compared to the way you say police small, therapist small, a teacher small. A pastor is hated by the physical and the spiritual. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. The story that is more interesting on newspaper is pastor. It's not president, pastor. If you hear now that they say your president has 20 wives, he has 35 girlfriends. You say, oh, that's what he's doing with our money. But when you see it's pastor, to have many views. That is how they also fight them spiritually. That's why men of God are the most depressed people. So the Lord has to teach me how to have a barricade so that you can, I, can never fail, I can never be depressed. I'm always happy. Are you hearing me? So if it is possible for me, it's possible for you. I don't think money will save you from depression. Money answers all things, not depression. He's talking about things. Depression is a spirit and frustrations. Are you hearing me? <laughs> uh, you know, the man that did um, Titanic, he said, not even God can sink this ship. That's what he said. Not even who? So money can make you become a fool. The same day that boat was exhibited, that's the day it sank. The people that made this B2 car, B2, said B2 is more popular than Jesus. That's what the producer said. He said B2 is more popular than Jesus. Where is B2 car today? It fizzled out of the market. So today you are awakening the God in you. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am awakening the God in me. One of the normal nature of man again that the devil used to trap them is in gratitude. Deuteronomy 28, 47. He said, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness. He didn't say you didn't serve. There's one thing to serve and there's another thing to serve with joy and gladness. So that you will not serve God in frustration and depression as if God is forcing you. They are not all service God take. Not all worship, not all praise, God accepts. Not all giving, God accepts. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. So if I'm a preacher, I must preach with joy and gladness of heart. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies. Is it that you serve God with joy and gladness or you serve your enemies? Whom the Lord will send against you. Now look at the name of those enemies. Hunger, taste, nakedness. And in need of everything. So if you check your life, there's hunger, there's nakedness, there's taste, and there's need. You are needy. It's because you are not serving with joy and gladness. He said, and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of ingratitude, I command them to be cast out. Yeah. The devil lies to us. The devil put fear in us. All these things have their danger. The devil put impossibility that things are not possible for you. And he wants to hold you bound with ingratitude. He said he will put a yoke of iron until he has destroyed you. The thief have come to steal, kill, and destroy. So he first of all puts ingratitude to serving God as if they are begging you. They need to be romancing you. The more you are depressed in anything you are doing for God, the more the thing is sinking. You can't be a depressed minister and your ministry will grow. It will be sinking. You can't be a depressed believer and your business grow. It will be sinking. So today the Lord is saying, anything that is sinking in your life, the way out has come. The way out is thanksgiving. Every prison door the enemy have kept you, thanksgiving is the way out. 
Every lack you are experiencing, thanksgiving is the way out. Every hunger you are experiencing, thanksgiving is the way out. Every taste you are experiencing, thanksgiving is the way out. And today you are receiving the spirit of thanksgiving. Is created, is there to show you the facts of life. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk 3, from verse 14. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my heart shall I make it known. From the rising of the sun, right until it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Is this start from verse 17? Habakkuk 3:17. Habakkuk 3:17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, that is fact. Things are not going well. The fig tree may not blossom. These are facts. No fruit be on the vine, no money in the account. Though the labor of the olive tree may fail, and the feed yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no head in the stores. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> I thought we should praise God when the fig tree blossom. I thought we should praise God, we should rejoice when the fig tree is blossoming. I thought I should rejoice when there's fruit on the vine. I thought I should rejoice when the labor of the olive prospers. I thought I should rejoice when the feed is yielding food. I thought I should rejoice when there's so much flock in the stock. But he said, you rejoice when the facts of life are challenging you. God will not take it away. They will be there. They are adding facts, looking at you. Who are you? We are going nowhere. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. Then what will happen? He said, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like a deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high heel. You will walk like on high heel like a woman. Before a woman can walk on high heel, she must be happy. If you don't learn to walk on high heel, you will fall. You don't look at what is going on in your life to, for you to determine whether you should give thanks to God or not? We give thanks to God for what he has done. We praise him for who he is. It's not a negotiation. And one of the, you see, what God used to explain the facts of life properly is Lazarus in the grave. In the book of John 11 from verse 41. Let's start from 40. Then Jesus said to her, okay, go up again, 39. The fact of life is the stone. That's the meaning of that stone there. Jesus said, take away the stone. If you don't take away the stone, you will not bring Lazarus out. Everything around you is Lazarus that want to resurrect. But the fact of life is covering your eyes. That Lazarus cannot resurrect. So first of all, before you assess Lazarus, roll away the facts of life. Are you seeing that? They roll away the stone. The matter, the sister of him who was dead said to him, Lord, by this time, there's a stink. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you. It's not, listen, Lazarus have not woken up. He said, you, when you roll away the fact of life, that's the only time you can say thank you. Not that things are going on well. You roll away the fact first. He said, Father, even if I'm in pain, thank you. Even if things are not going well for me, thank you. You are rolling away the facts. 
may you receive power to roll away facts from your life. As far as you are in this body, you will keep on seeing facts that will make you not to be thankful. Those that have want more. Those that don't have want. Those that have, 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 have. Want to have, 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 have. So they don't even see what they have. Facts are blindfolded the eyes of men. And whenever God finds a life that there's no thanksgiving, that life becomes bankrupt of God's presence. Because the Bible said in the book of Psalm 22, from verse 3, that God is enthroned in the praise of the righteous. He stays there. What that translation says, he inhabits where there's praise. He stays there. The worst thing that can ever happen to someone is for you to move with the absence of God's presence. Doing anything when God's presence is not involved, that's the worst thing that can ever happen to you. Being a preacher without God's presence, doing business without God's presence is the worst thing. And wherever there's no thanksgiving, God is not there. Those hands that are clapping, you are the first to receive this blessing. You don't know your hand is a thanksgiving. That's how you use it. Thank you, Jesus. As you are clapping, may all your debt be settled. As you are clapping, may your promotion let the more your clap is coming, the more favor you will be experiencing. The more blessings you will be experiencing. See that? Are you hearing me? So I was saved as a preacher without depression. I'm never depressed. I'm never scared. I'm never sorrowful because I've discovered that everything are facts. I don't trust facts. I roll away facts and I give thanks. And whenever I give thanks, Lazarus will always resurrect. <laughs> if you look at the facts, Lazarus will remain there. Nothing resurrects until fact is rolled away. I'm telling you, the Bible says Mary Madeline and the rest of the women, they wanted to go and anoint Jesus' body. And when they got there, they were asking themselves, who will roll away the stone for us? Who will take away the fact? Because if the stone is not rolled, even Jesus cannot do anything. So, listen, even the Bible said the Jewish leaders, they went to pay Pilate. They said, please, put soldiers on that gate where that stone is rolled. Because we had the deceiver saying that after three days he will resurrect. So that his disciples will not go and steal him out of there. So put soldiers there to guide the fact. So demons stand to guide facts. <laughs> demons, that, that, those are demonic soldiers he's talking about. They guide all the facts that your senses can see. All the lies you believe, demons guide them. All your fears, demons supervise it. <laughs> let me tell you something now. Let me explain something to you. You entered a place where people didn't know you. All of a sudden, they saw you and they started shouting, Honorable, Honorable. <laughs> now, everybody that was there, they, they, they drove them out of the way and gave you front seat. And they started serving you as VIP. And you start asking yourself, I'm not Honorable, but you will not talk, isn't it? You are not hearing me. <laughs> Who does not like first class service? Are you, who, who not like them? Now, everybody is serving you. Honorable. Honorable. They are respecting you for long. Then all of a sudden, one person now wants to say, it's not the honorable. Would, would you try to say, call down to, call, call. <laughs> Once you amplify the devil, you want to start getting yourself. He becomes angry. Some things you are scared of now, you just amplified it. That's what the devil does. The devil is scared that you should not be scared. Yeah, yeah, you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Tell anybody, the devil is scared that you shouldn't be scared. May you be rescued from all your fears. Be rescued from all your lies. Be rescued from all impossibilities. In the name of Jesus. Say I can do all things. True Christ. That strengthens me.
The devil is sent to supervise the lie that you believe. They make sure they are guiding that stone. Let them not take away that stone. So before Jesus could even resurrect, an angel had to roll away the stone. Can't you see that? You are asking why is Jesus not responding in your life? There's so much facts and unbelief. So much fact is enveloping your life. You have to roll away those facts. Jesus will resurrect in your life. Are you hearing me? He will resurrect in your career. He will resurrect in your family. He will resurrect in your finance. Roll away the facts. Are you hearing me? You roll away those facts by giving thanks. Say, Father, thank you. Like the way Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus. He said, Father, thank you because you always hear me. When you connect to God, anything dead, we are weak. Are you seeing what he said there? He said, Father, what? Father, what? I thank you that you have had me. Father, I thank you that you have had me. The Bible said in the book of John 6, from verse 6, when he saw the multitude, the many facts, that's what he's talking about, the multitude. He tested his disciples. He said, what are we going to do to feed this multitude? Uh -huh. Philip answered it. Even 200 dinary worth of bread is not sufficient for them. And every one of them may have little. One of his disciples Andrew says, there's a young boy here that has five loaves of bread and two fishes. See, but what can that do? What can this do among these many? Jesus said, don't worry. Tell everybody to sit down. Tell everybody to sit down. The Bible said, look at that. He said, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he has done what? The fact will not go away until you give thanks. The challenges will not go away. Until you are a thanks giver. If you want to live in that realm of with God, all things are possible. Then you must be a thanks giver. This was the secret of Jesus. That was his mystery. Whenever it comes to situations where facts are opposing him, Say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for long life. Thank you for good health. Thank you for prosperity. Thank you for open. In Jesus' name. Now listen, not every prayer God hears, but God receives all thanks. You can pray amiss. You can give thanks amiss. It was James that said, let not a double-hearted man think he will receive anything from the Lord. So when it's time to ask or pray, you have to pray. It has, it's a compulsory that you pray with in faith. It is thanksgiving that generates faith. God also answers prayer. But it comes down when there's praise. When you pray, maybe you pray right. God answers. But when you praise, he comes. So Jesus said, David said, he prayed three times a day. He was talking in Psalm 55. From verse 16. As for me, I will call upon... Okay, let's start from... Go to 1 before we jump to 16. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Now jump to that. He said, attend... Okay, sorry, go back to 2 again. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint. And mourn noisily. Okay, go to 15. 16. He said, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. I say, we hear your voice. But in Psalm 119 from verse 164, David said, seven times a day I will praise. <laughs> How many times? When it comes to prayer, I say three times a day. When it comes to praise, he says seven times. You see that? Seven times a day I will praise you because of your righteous judgment. So God was not hearing the prayers because he was praying three times a day. It was, it was backed up with seven times praise. I break the power of ingratitude from your heart. In the name of Jesus. 
So these were the mysteries God was building my heart with. And I stayed with it. So I know how to defy any facts that is coming my way. I know how to put down any suggestion the devil is giving to me. Anything my sight is seeing. Anything the flesh hears and wants to believe. Every lies of the enemy. I've learned to put them under my feet. And when you learn this, you will keep on being victorious in everything you do. Everywhere you go, you will be victorious. Are you hearing me? So this is not something you just learn. It becomes a life. It becomes a life. It becomes a lifestyle. Therefore, I'm praying for you. The last time you ever depressed, the last time you ever frustrated or confused, is the last time you ever be. In the name of Jesus. Say, I will serve God with rejoicing, with joy. Because the Lord have rolled away all your facts. Are they being rolled out of your eyes? <laughs> with man, it is impossible. Not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I see restoration in your life. I see God awakening everything the enemy has taken away from you. I see your thanksgiving bring a change in your life. No more feebleness in your life. No more doubt and fear in your life. There's restoration going on in your life. No more delay again in your life. In the name of Jesus, I see an angel rolling away those stones from you. These stones have been rolled away. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Begin to say, thank you, Father. Give him thanks. That is the way out. Give him thanks. In everything, give thanks to God. In all things, Give him thanks. In Jesus' name. In Proverbs 15, from verse 6, it says, There are good revenues in the house. Is it in the house of the righteous? There's much treasure, so much blessing. The house is talking about. Is your life. There's so much treasure in your life. And you only provoke them into manifestation through thanksgiving. Listen. Tell your feelings how to feel. You are not yet. <laughs> tell your feelings how to feel. Let your feeling not feel for you. You don't know all these things are what God gave to you that you should have dominion over them. Your feelings. Tell your feelings how to feel. I don't know how I'm feeling today. Today looks so gloomy. I feel so sad. I don't. Control that feeling. Tell your feeling how to feel. Tell your feeling. Tell your feeling. How to feel. If your feeling is feeling bad, Tell your feeling to feel good. You see, we don't know how to control these things. They are controlling us. Sometimes you just find yourself mood swing. You are just sad. The truth is you don't know why you are sad. Do you know that depression, sadness, mood swing is a mental disorder? You don't know. Oh, God. 
Most time, if you you the sometimes you think something is the reason why is the lie. If that thing is there, you will still feel like that. You will have everything. You've gotten everything. We are still feeling sad. You can be you uh, 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 you can be sad. Yet your business is going well. You can be sad, yet you are married. You can be sad, yet you have kids. Well, hear the good news. Hear what God said I should tell you. That you should start giving him thanks because he has heard all your prayers. Yeah. Yes. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 9, from verse 7, he said, eat your bread with joy. Drink your wine with a merry heart. For God has already accepted your works. Do you see that there? Already. Read it. Let me hear. Yeah. Uh, meaning every of your prayer points is already answered. The reason why you have been going to the mountain, fasting, everything you have been doing, God has already. It is thanksgiving that activates it. Once you begin to give thanks, you begin to see all the answers. Your answer is in thanksgiving. Is it what? Is it what? Don't be among the company of the complainers because complaining our brother, fear our brother. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, from verse 9, it says you should not be like those who complained. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and we are destroyed by the serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complain and we are destroyed by the destroyer. So the more you complain, the more you are destroyed. We saw that when we are not serving God with joy and gladness, we are destroyed same thing also, when we complain, we are destroyed. He said, now all these things happen to them as an example for you. May you not be a bad example. Somebody should not look at your life and say, ah, if this guy complained and he's dying, I won't complain again. That will not be your testimony. The Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. You don't overcome by complaining, you overcome by testifying. You don't overcome by murmuring. Making call to tell, but do you know, do you know I've been sick for many days, you didn't call me? Do you know I've been suffering, I've not paid my rent for so many? Sharing your pain does not heal you, and it does not bring you out. Instead, it makes you a topic to other people. So you have to strengthen yourself in the Lord. While you are sitting there in the face of that fear and the facts of life, you're going to say, Father, I thank you. So it is when the devil blindfolded us, they will begin to complain. Oh God, which kind of life is this? When the angel of God appeared in the book of Genesis 18 to Sarah and said, Sarah shall conceive. The Bible says, Sarah laughed. He said, can my Lord have pleasure anymore in me? We are old. And the angel said to her, why did you laugh? She said, I did not laugh. Why do you think the angel did not strike her to death? Why did the angel not? Are you lying to me? That was God that came down in the likeness of men. Why didn't he kill her? He knows that you have five senses. And your five senses is acquainted to fear lie and impossibility. He knows. He said, Sarah denied. He said, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? But Sarah denied the saying. I did not laugh. He said, for she was afraid. You see why she lied? These are the things I just counted. Because when you check your life, your womb look like old womb, dead womb. Your business look dead. Your life just look dead. You are just dressing nice. Rub all your face and you are smiling. Meanwhile, you are not happy inside. Listen. Anytime you are smiling, make sure you are smiling from your heart. It is not the smile of the face that changes things. It is the smile of the heart. The smile of the face convinced men. The smile of your heart convinced God. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, oh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. They left. And they told them, Abraham, they said, oh, come back according to the time of life. The Bible said in Genesis 21, from verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. So Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son when he was eight days old as God has commanded him. Now Abraham was 
100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. All who hear will laugh with me. Until you laugh before everything around you can laugh. If you are gloomy, everything will be gloomy. Sarah said, God has made me laugh. And all who hear will laugh with me. If you are a crier, you attract criers. If you are a complainer, you attract complainers. If you are fearful, you attract fearful people. If you are joyful, you attract joyful people. These things are magnets. So once you are laughing, you begin to attract those that will laugh with you. Once you are happy, you begin to attract those that will be happy with you. Once you celebrate, you begin to attract those who will celebrate with you. So choose it this day who you will serve. Choose it this day is a choice. Joy is a choice. Sorrow is a choice. And as for me and my family, we will choose to rejoice. I choose joy over sorrow. I choose rejoicing over crying. I choose giving thanks over complaining. I choose celebration over mourning. I choose beauty over arches. I choose favor over disappointment. What do you choose for yourself? The devil does not choose for you. Neither does God choose for you. You choose and they join you. Whatever you choose, they join you. When the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, John the Baptist, when he was put in prison, in Matthew 11, he asked, are you the one that should come or should we wait for another? He was angry. <laughs> It is a painful thing to be angry with God. You are, you, are you hearing me? It is imprisonment. It is bondage. Are you the one that should come? Or should you? The same person that was saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The same one. Are you the one that should come? Or should we wait for another? Jesus said, blessed are those that are not offended in me. Now, John was depressed, sad, because he was facing the facts of life. Then, Herodias' daughter, this is, as I said, her name is Salome. She danced, 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 danced. Twist her waist. After she finished twisting, Herod said, ask me anything. Even half of my kingdom, I will give you just somebody being grateful. These laws work for the believer and, or unbeliever. A king is ready to give half of his kingdom to somebody that just danced. And you, you are crying. And she said, no, what I need is John the Baptist's head. May somebody not dance your head out of your head, out of your body. May they not dance your head out of your body. <laughs> May they not dance your head out of your body. It's a, it's, a, it's a prayer you should pray for yourself. Because if you are angry, somebody is dancing. Do you hear what I said? When you are gloomy, somebody is dancing. So you either be the dancing one or the crying one. I choose to be the dancing one. Ask your neighbor, what do you choose? So in the book of Hebrews 12, 12, Paul said, Therefore, strengthen the hands that are undone. Nobody will do it for you. And the feeble knees. Strengthen those hands. He said, why? He said, and make straight the parts of your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Strengthen. Come on, stand up. I, I, I don't want to remain here anymore. I don't want to be sad anymore. When David returned from battle and discovered that his wife was kidnapped and all his soldiers also, they kidnapped their wife and their children. And the Bible says, they sat down and were crying until they have no strength to cry. Is it when you choose cry? 
you will cry until you have no more strength to cry. There will not be solution. Then the, they were, the Bible said they were thinking to use stone to stone him to death. The fact of life, they want to use it to stone him to death. And David strengthened himself in his Lord is God. He strengthened himself. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a time you are alone in the pits. You have to strengthen yourself that you will come out. Every, are you hearing me? Yes. In that time, nobody goes with you. you. You'll be alone there. And it is the strength you give yourself that will bring you out. So I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I might be in the pit. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I might fail before, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So as you are going now, this revelation is between you, God, and the devil. Because he will try to come and bring you down, down. So when I started feeding myself, strengthening my spirit, so every day, even today after a year, I go for myself, strengthening myself. I don't wait for a weekend. Because if you become somebody that serves people, you just, something will tell you to forget yourself. Teachers, they forget themselves. Police, forget themselves. Therapists, forget themselves. Parents forget themselves for their children. You don't know that it's when you are alive that you can take care of your children. You say, I'm going to walk. So you are walking, 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 walking. You need to live for your children. So take care of yourself. So I began to take care of my spirit man. It needed help. I knew. Because it was in spiritual ICU. There are some men of God that need to close ministry now. Eh? Because their spirit is in spiritual. He need help. Some of us are spirit, I, I spiritual, I see you need help. I knew. Then I started feeding myself. And that is how everything around you is. They want you to feed yourself with faith, with joy. Everything around you will begin to experience. They will partake in what you are feeding from. If you feed with joy, everything around you will be joyful. What are you feeding yourself with? What is your spirit diet? Because they said, uh, I think it's Kenneth Egin that said that, or Benny In, that there is the anointing on you and there's the anointing in you. Now, the anointing on you as a minister, once it responds to people's need, so once you are here, even if I don't pray at home, even if I don't study, even if I don't do anything, even if I don't have a relationship with God, once you are here, your hunger will provoke the anointing on Because the anointing on me is not for me, it's for the people. And it's true, very true. And there's the anointing in you. You know what I have to where you use it. You bath, you drink. So the anointing on you is like the water you used to bath. The anointing in you is the one you drank. The one you, water you bath with cannot sustain you, cannot strengthen you. It's the one you drank. So that anointing in you need to be fed. So many men of God, many ministers, many people are starving the one in them. And they are using the one on them to help others. It's the anointing in you that will help you to overcome temptation. So the, the anointing on you you can use it to heal, do, do deliver and prophesy, and yet be a fornicator, a liar, a thief. It does not affect it. You don't know. Yes, a man of God can just finish sleeping with a woman now. No, 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 no. And come out, and he will prophesy very accurately. He will heal. He will do miracle here. Yeah. Because the anointing on you is like the anointing God put on the devil. He said, you are the anointed cherub. Those anointed, God does not take it away. Even if you are a sinner, you are a thief, it still remains on, uh, on you. It's the one in you that God used to know you. 
I am God. So God does not know me because I prophesy. I heal the sick. God knows me with the anointing in. That one is a relationship. That one is consecration, holiness. That's how God used to know his servant. The anointing on you can give you fame. You'll be all over the internet, everywhere. Everywhere people know you, everywhere you go. People are grad grading. Because what can man see? Only a demon can see you and know that they, they have already colored be you and they won't disturb you. Because they know that everybody that is even gathering is not for God that they are gathering for. They are gathering for one of their slaves. So you have to build the one within, the anointing within. Don't profess Christian without. Be a professing Christian from within. Be rooted in God. Be rooted. So the true giants in the kingdom of God are those that the anointing within is powerful. Because the anointing is within is one you use to overcome temptation. That's why you can see that a man of God that is very powerful with anointing on is the weakest when it comes to woman. And you are surprised. Because this one does not help you to resist. It even helps you to attract. It attracts people to you. It attracts women. You don't know. <laughs> Someone say now we know. Don't you know that most times when you see all these gospel singers, they sing, 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 sing. Ah, you see women doing oh, 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 oh. the 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 charisma the anointing carries it attracts it attracts so God put it to attract souls into his kingdom that's what that's why he put it there but now if it finish attracting you don't build the one within is empty You'll be attracting people to destroy them. So, even faith, when it comes to you having faith, is the anointing within. You also have it, so it's not, I'm not saying this for only men of God, it's in you, it's in you, it's in me. Many of you know that sometimes people come to you. You begin to advise them. Meanwhile, you are frustrated. You are advising them. And immediately you started advising. Words were coming out from your mouth accurately. And they started getting healed, isn't it? Meanwhile, you are frustrated in your own part. Yeah. <laughs> it's the anointing on you that was working then. It's in every believer. Every believer is on you. Then you say, I noticed I used to cancel people and they used to hear and their life is fine. But me, my life is not fine. The one on you will not do anything for you. Mm -mm. It's for the people. It's for, it's for people. So if you read the Bible, the Bible say, Lucifer, thou art the anointed cherub. You were the perfection of beauty. God did not take those things away from him. It's still in him anointed. May God give us understanding. Amen. So you as a believer now, you must learn. It takes, you, you must learn to build that anointing within. It takes gratitude. It takes you studying the word of God personally. Not what we are doing here now. You don't build it by what we are doing here. Thank you, Father. Give the give glory to his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. What is the lamb was slain? Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. What is the Lamb who 
Ta dizes is of Baria Tipota, Baratos is a Bagakitota. Then the Ligos of Randicolia must see the Bredegades. He turns the Borean de Gabaria Putari. Catacamas of Balias is of Praticatu. A Cabellas is a Batabarish Cadabalagada. You will need strength to your inner man for this race. Because the facts of life will try to challenge you. Unbelief, doubt, fear, lies. They will challenge your faith. Impossibilities will challenge you. Separadico <laughs> Hungarian Gagagi Gagakute Gagabaratis of Alato. Hey, Nakaido Saila Kaida. Besaida Rashida Kusaida. Manda Gingo Goranda Zivele Kote Maradisha. Hobala de Zibele Digo Zebela Caparadis of Alate. Longa Belaziz Katomerianda. Iqua Beriono si se maradico bella tavisa si bella tamero. La sevilia ni cabarate maratobe. Takaku peratiseva. Gaia cameno se maratameleca. E caradu se variama coperetica paratomba. Arute rariano mose la taia. Aia capelletina ve catail suze. Shete belekino maradise. Honga Beradia Coperion de Cacacadi Zeba. Ah, dear Mena. Hindo Goberiane. Nike Severiate. Avisa Viria no Maracopeliate. Acu Cabera di Zebara Meniaco. E Cabellina Kika Ito Berat de Shada. Aradeba la Coberia a Soberian no Cobaratanio. Mela Savami Carian di Cabasela. Hayeka Katabila Nale, Ima Rabarato, Apronta Bela Coparatiske, Ala La Suze Maradio Makanga, Apore no Semarandi Kute Akuberande Sida. Jack your spirit up. Jack it up, jack it up. Straighten the fibulas. Straighten your fibulas. Straighten your feeble feet. Strengthen your feeble inner man. Get a kabi kute kadizizi. Rianda kaka kabarato. Ela saya kape kote marianda. Moriandi ziki gika kuka katwa. Unze barabirianda gikanguria kota. E kange bezi sokati kabarate. Kikeko branda kozi vanata, arie de baladi so kavela tiaga, anda inda inda ikai ikai kutaga kabeketo. Brando si variane koba, aki kurie ne balate, ato fa paratizu, shesi barakumeriata, ora kepeketo meketakate. 
Ted six Vikakato Hara Tete Copa that Timo Sectavicota be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may withstand the evil days, your trying days, your perilous days. Stand! The call to your inner man, stand in the midst of your pressure, stand in the midst of your challenges, stand. In the midst of the sickness, stand therefore. Let your spirit man stand. Let your inner man stand. There is a confrontation against you. Hell a prison of the head against you. Opposing powers are arising against you. Stand. Confront them. Do not be afraid. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. The Lord said to Joshua, Have I not told you to be courageous, to be bold? It takes courage, it takes boldness to stand, to fight, to confront. I get maladies, seven the maladies, Kata. Let the God in you stand. Let the God in you stand. Let all men be liars. But let God be true. There is a God in you that was awake. The devil can lie to your senses. He cannot lie to the God in you. In Jesus name there's nothing you will receive here today whether from me or from God what we came here to do is to charge that's why it's called service Sunday service church service servicing your spirit there is an amount of strength you need to fulfill destiny and that strength is an inner man's strength, inner man, strengthening your inner man. Strength in your mind. To be a good athletic, you must know how to go to the gym and strengthen your muscles. The church is where you strengthen your inner man. Because there are days of tests. When you pass the corridor of test, then you enter testimony. But it takes strength to conquer the test. 
Many faint at the corridor of the test. The Bible said if you faint in the days of battle, it's because your strength is small. If you faint, there's battle. There are forces confronting you, confronting your testimony. There are facts. There are stones that need to be rolled away that are confront. You need strength in your inner man. In Jeremiah 7, 17, he said, They will be among us, feeble ones. All right, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. He said, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted. There are people among us that are faint-hearted people, and your destiny needs a bold heart. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. Then in Hebrew 12, 12, it says, Strengthen. I say to you, okay, after they have finished confronting you, now strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. It's talking about your spiritual hand and your spiritual knee. Because you might not be lame physically, but you might be lame spiritually. There are spiritual lameness. And if your spirit is not moving, your body will not go anywhere. Strengthen a feeble one. He said, Less that one that is not strengthened, it will be dislocated. He said, And the feeble is, and make straight the path for your feet, so that that which is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. When the devil is telling you, Sit down, you stand up. When he's telling you, Give up, you stand up. You are standing from where the devil has kept you to sit. The prophet Isaiah said it in Isaiah 35 from verse 5. He says, strengthen the feeble ones. You are waking up today. Yeah. You are fulfilling destiny today. Because everything God has prepared for you, it takes courage to get them. He told Joshua, have I not said to you in Joshua 1, he said, be courageous. A coward can never fulfill destiny. It is the courageous that fulfills destiny. A coward cannot possess their possession. I'm praying for you. May your faith not fail. Amen. I pray for you. Amen. May you not submit to the evil one. Amen. I pray for you. Amen. May you not give up on your glorious destiny. You have a lot to do for God. You still have a lot. You still have a lot. You still have a lot. Don't allow the stone to deceive you. There's still much testimony that will come out of you. In 2 Chronicles 1, uh, 20 from verse 1, the Moabites and the Ammonites, they gathered against Israel and they were more in number. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them beside the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you. What is coming against you? Great yeah. <laughs> it's not a joke. The, the enemy that is coming, there are many he said, from beyond the sea, the Syria, they are in Azazel, Tamar, which is in Endi. He said, and Joshua feared. But, and he set himself to seek the Lord, to proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. So Judea gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from the cities of Judea, they came to seek the Lord. Then Joshua stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, 
in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 15. He said, and said, O Lord God of our Father, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of nations? And in your hands, is there not power and might? So that no one is able to withstand you. And he said, listen, this was the promise the prophet was giving to them. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid, nor dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but yes. God's. Yeah. I want to tell you how to come out of every bondage and oppression you have been going through. Yeah. In verse 20, Jehoshaphat came out bold and said, Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, then you will prosper. Amen. God always sends his prophet with strategy for you to overcome your enemies. Amen. When God moved with the children of Israel, he said his secret thing belongs to God. God has secret things. When Jesus came, he called them mysteries. These are the mysteries I'm telling you. Mysteries to come out of that oppression. When you get to a point where you don't know what to do, what I'm teaching you is to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Yes. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Then believe in his prophet. Definitely, you will prosper. Yes. Hear me? I am a prophet of God. Yes. I am. You know prophets by their message. Not by their prophecy, by their message. That's why the Bible said, you find Isaiah, the book of Isaiah is his message. The book of Jeremiah. The book of Ezekiel, Habakkuk, Daniel. You know them by their message. Not by their act. Because the message of the prophet is the way out for the believers. Amen. Now, verse 21. You see, because this is what is going to happen to you today. This was the strategy. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. Who should do what? Sing to the Lord. And who should praise the beauty of his holiness. Did he say they should complain? In the midst of the opposition, he said they should sing. They should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army. And we are saying, praise the Lord for his mercies endures forever. <laughs> now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said, ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mansai, who had come against you. And they were defeated. Amen. The Bible says, For the people of Ammon and the Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sai, they helped to destroy one another. The enemies destroyed themselves. 24. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude and there were dead bodies. Falling on the earth, no one has escaped. None of your enemies shall escape. Amen. None of your trial will escape. Amen. 25. He said, When George Shepherd and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuable on the dead bodies and precious jewel which they strip off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. There's a way out. I said, There's a way out. Amen. To that battle, there's a way out. Amen. To that affliction, there's a way out. Amen. To that sorrow, there's a way out. Amen. To that crying, there's a way out. Amen. Thanksgiving is the way out. Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? What is the way out? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the way out. 
the way out for you has come. Amen. The way out of that trial has come. Amen. You have to dance and sing in the midst of the fact. It is the dancing that changed the story. How many of you are ready to stretch the feeble hands? <laughs> you stretch it out in your dancing. When you know the enemy is trying to paralyze you with challenges of life, you don't have to sit down and cry. Whenever you stand, you are strengthening the feeble hands. According to electricity, according to science, two negative charge electrons, they cannot join. They repel. Positive and positive cannot be together. Negative and negative. It has to be negative and positive. You understand that? Yes. Meaning, if you are feeling sad, if things are not going well, if you conform to it inside, you will not attract anything new. So when things are negative, opposite, then you have to rejoice from within. The more things are going bad and you are, bad, you are sad, repelling, you are repelling good things, nothing to just be like that. Negativity that attracts positivity. When things look too bad for you, then you are fit for testimony. Amen. Believe me, these laws are truth. That's why God told them, praise, sing, dance in the midst of their enemies. <laughs> the last time you cry is the last time you ever cry. And as you are being revived now, everything around you is being revived. Yeah. What was, whatever was dead in you is alive now. Yeah. Whatever was dead in your career is alive now. Yeah. The Bible says, Sarah said, the Lord has made me laugh. Everyone that hears it will laugh. Yeah. So I want you to laugh because every, everything around you will laugh. Are you look at your neighbor and say, I'm laughing? Are you laughing? I'm laughing. <laughs> Make sure you are laughing. It's not just I'm laughing. Everything around you will laugh. Amen. Your career will laugh. Amen. Your spiritual life will laugh. Amen. Your business will begin to laugh. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't be surprised when everything is turning around for you. You created it. Your laughter did it. Amen. The Lord said to me, don't try to change the world. Change you. The world will respect you. Amen. It will form into your shape. Are you hearing me? So the job is you. Don't try to gather people, hey, come and help me. No, no, no. Don't worry. Believe. Change you. Believe you. Laugh. You is you. is about you. This thing is all about what? Yeah, it's not the office that they are fighting, you know. It's not everybody that hates you at work. It's you. You don't like you. So you must start liking you. Start celebrating with you. Start laughing with you. Start believing in you. Amen. Everything will begin to respond Amen. to you. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Get ready for a huge turnaround. Amen. 
Now listen, let me announce. We don't sell the oil in case you are I don't know those that are looking for oil every year, year and death. The pressure, people are using to look for that oil of um, yeah, fruitfulness. The, the, the force. Somebody can even go and fake another one or even steal it and sell it to you. In case you have bought any oil here, we, are, in fact, we, are, we don't know where it came from. So you didn't buy oil from God. God does not sell oil. We gave the oil according to the will and the direction of God. We gave it free because you can't purchase the anointing of God. You can't. So be careful, be warned. If somebody is selling oil for you, it's him that is making it, him, him and the, his father, the devil. They are, they, are, they are making and they are supplying to you. It's not from us. We will never sell oil. We have never sold. When the time comes again, if God announces again, we will give it again for free. Are you hearing me? That's why when they give it to you, you don't drink it. It's, many people overuse it. You abuse it. Now it's finished. Now you're looking for that one to abuse again. A, a drop of that oil can carry you for a year. How come you finish that one? For one bad dream you had. One, just one. <laughs> God, one food you ate in your dream. You carry the full bomb. Kumu. Ah, is that how powerful the devil is? Huh? So that oil was supposed to last you for a year. If your one is finished, wait for one year. Next time, you know how to use it. When people see that you abuse things, then they'll be producing more. That's why it's become merchandising business. They say, ah, the consumers are consuming. Let me make more oil. Then they become a business. It's you people that cause it. When you see this prophet selling oil, they say, hey, why would prophet say it's you? You. Your demand was so much. So even if we start selling 1,000, people will be paying. So if a prophet calculates 1,000 times 100, is it not 100,000? Just imagine. Now we have many crowd here. For you watch, I've gotten a million in less than three months. Think, and I think your brain is working now. See, I didn't say it's wrong to sell oil. Anybody, everybody, God gave them their own revelation. Some people, they, they can say it's them, but I'm saying, yeah, we we're not told to sell. You get the point now? Yes, uh, even those that are online, those online, be warned. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen.